So the first thing you're going to do is to check the calibration on the screen. So you take uh, uh, where I'm, I'm hooked, this is hooked to channel one. So I make sure I've got this set at channel one. So I'm looking at channel one. I'm going to hook this to the, the tab here. And uh, uh, I get that very confusing looking pattern. And again, we talked about uh, how we can freeze this with this little knob up here. So I want to make sure this is on channel one. We're looking at channel one. We're hooked to channel one. We need to switch this to channel one uh, so that we're triggering it on channel one. Okay, so now that what that did is it froze the pattern, which means it's the little electron dot. Don't forget, this is only just one. This is an electron cathode ray tube, just like the one you worked with the first week or second week in class. And it's shooting one little electron beam, one little dot on the screen. Uh, in fact, I can show you that dot. There it is. It's going by very slowly uh, in this calibration. This is one thing you don't want to do uh, is to have this dot be fairly bright, which it is fairly bright. It's not super bright. I can turn it up and make it look glaring uh, and, and just sitting on the screen because that will actually burn through the phosphor and, and that part of the screen won't light up anymore. So uh, you want to make sure that uh, if you have uh, just a dot on the screen, it's a, not a very bright dot and it's not just sitting there, hopefully. So we're going to sweep this faster and faster. And this is another, another demonstration of the, let me put that on ground, of the persistence of your eye. Okay, so there it goes across the screen. You can see it's clearly a dot. So the electron beam, there's, a, there's vertical, there's horizontal. Uh, this doesn't have deflection plates. It has a magnet, which actually works faster. So it's magnetically deflected. And we'll talk about magnetic forces later. So we have a magnetic force on this, causing this dot to move uh, over on the screen. And that, that um, voltage is, uh, is built up. So uh, as we talked about earlier, there's, there's a, uh, a um, sawtooth wave generator in here that makes the voltage go from zero all up to the maximum, zero all the way up to the maximum, zero all the way up to the maximum. And what that does is, is sweep the, the data across the screen linearly until it gets to the, to the uh, right side of the screen. And then it shuts off and it jumps back over here at zero voltage and it goes up linearly until it gets us here and it jumps back. So that, that's what's going on here. I'm, uh, the sawtooth wave generator is generating according to this, uh, if it's calibrated, which it is, one tenth of a second. Uh, so it should take one tenth of a second times 10 divisions should take one second to go across the screen. So 1,001. 1, 1, okay, now it's, it's not calibrated very well. So, uh, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, we will check the calibration, time calibration as part of the experiment. So, so we'll move, turn this faster and faster. The dot goes across the screen because of the persistence in your eye and also the persistence of the, uh, of the uh, phosphor in the back of the screen. Uh, eventually that dot turns into a line and if you turn it up a little further, uh, it goes across the screen so fast it looks like a nice steady straight line. So let's leave it at that. That's two milliseconds per division. So it's going across the screen in 20 milliseconds, uh, which means uh, it's going across the screen several times in the time you can see something new on the screen. So it looks like it's frozen there. Great. So again, this can move it up and down. And uh, I'll, I'll put the, I'll put the uh, trace right in the middle. And so we're going to have our zero voltage reference in the middle, obviously. And so I've got this on calibrate. I've got this on 0.1 volts per centimeter. If I switch this off the ground to channel, channel one, I see this. Okay, and if I turn this faster and faster and faster, I'm looking at a pattern that's, that's going up and down. It's going from maximum minimum. You can't see the vertical lines on the square wave because they're just really vertical and it doesn't, there's not enough time to, going from here to here to actually show or activate the phosphor on that screen. So we have a, we have a square wave that's frozen thanks to my adjustment over here. Uh, if I adjust it out of adjustment, it just looks like a big mess. Uh, if I turn it so that uh, the adjustment locks into this voltage setting to trigger it, it's being triggered from the voltage between here and here. Uh, and so we can measure this. Okay, so let me move this 
position so that we're on the bottom trace is on a line and the top trace if the top trace is exactly let's see what scale are we on 0.1 volts per centimeter this is a 0.5 volt signal so it should be 1.1 uh, times 5 or 5 centimeters tall so 1 2 3 4 5 it's a little more than 5 in fact if you look carefully uh, it's it's uh, 5 0.2. Each one of these small divisions is 0.2 centimeters or 2 millimeters. And so I would say it's at 5.2 centimeters, uh, which means it should be at exactly 5 centimeters, and it isn't. So 0.2 out of 5 is 2.5%. And, and so it's 2.5% off. So when you do your lab, if this is the oscilloscope you're using, and it's and you decide it's it, this is point this is 5.2 and not 5.0 like it should be then everything you see on the screen on channel one is going to be higher than it really is and so you've got to multiply by a uh, adjustment factor a calibration factor and uh, see uh, we said two percent we'll just call it two percent uh, so you multiply it by uh, you multiply it by 0.98 uh, which which reduces it by two percent so you're a correction factor for this this channel anytime you look at anything on channel one it's going to be uh, two percent too high so you have to multiply it by one over 1.02 which is 0.98 that's the conversion factor so uh, multiply this whatever you're looking at this on this channel by 0.98 that's a true voltage that you're measuring peak to peak or top to bottom or whatever kind of voltage you're measuring so it's off calibration uh, we don't have a way to calibrate it. We have a way to calibrate it by multiplying anything you read on this scale on channel 2 by 0.98 to make it close to the right value. Once we've got it calibrated, check the calibration on, on both channel 1 and channel 2. Don't forget to switch this to channel 2 when you want to look at channel 2 and switch this uh, trigger switch to channel 2 when you're trying to trigger on channel 2. So check the calibration on channel 2. Maybe channel 2 is a little bit off. You have to come up with a correction factor which you apply for every voltage you measure on channel 2, just like channel 1. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is measure some DC voltages. Here's your battery pack. You've used that before. This is the, this is the ground, the black again. This is the live wire. I'm going to hook this to the... Uh, what you see here is noise that's picking up the electric fields from these... Uh, high voltage fluorescent lights up here and if you want to get rid of that uh, you can connect these two together and that prevents you from picking up any uh, stray signals from whatever's going on in the room. So we'll put this back on the ground. We'll put this on 1.5 volts and not much happened. It looks like, well let's see, something happened. No, not, not much happened. The reason for that is I have this switched to AC. Remember, we talked about AC. I want to switch this to DC because that allows me to measure some steady or direct current voltages, battery voltages, cell voltages. Now, this, the trace has gone completely off the scale. It's up there someplace where you aren't going to see it. So you've got to adjust this to get it back on scale. Oh, there it is. Okay, so what's actually happened? Let me take this off and put it back on. You see, the, there's a, a DC voltage, there's a steady voltage that applied to the vertical voltage deflection plates, uh, and it's jumped up to that level. Now, the, the, probably the easiest way to work with this is to put this on ground, okay? Uh, that means you're not looking at anything. You can adjust the position so that it's sitting right on one of those lines, and then flip this back to DC and see how far it jumps. Now that's the DC voltage applied steadily from that one particular cell. So it's one, two, three, um, I'm gonna say it's 3.3 or 3 point, yeah, okay, 3.3 centimeters jump. What's that mean? Well, uh, I'm on the 0.5 volts per centimeter scale. And so that means 3.3 times 0.5 is 1.65 volts. So this is, this is a battery. The cell here, which I'm measuring, is uh, producing uh, uh, a steady voltage in EMF. We'll 
he'll talk about that later, uh, uh, of 1.65 volts. But you say, well, it's a 1.5 volt battery. Why is it doing? Why is it putting out 1.65? Well, that's the that's its maximum chemical uh, electrochemical potential of doing that, and it's really roughly a 1.5 volt battery. Okay, so it's really 1.65 when you're not drawing any current, and this uses very very little current to see what's going on, uh, and so it's it's really measuring its what's called electromotive force or its maximum output under no drawing of current under no load, as they say. So, uh, 1.65 volts. Fine, let's check another one. So that should be around three, and it's again jumped off the scale because there are scales too, too, uh, too large. Let's go to a smaller scale, and again, ground, uh, and then the signal. So this is, this is on a different scale, uh, it's on the uh, one volt per centimeter scale, and it's jumping a little over three units, which is a little over three volts. And again, it's over three volts for the same reason we just talked about. Now, you can more accurately measure that by perhaps putting this down, putting, putting this line, zero volt line down here, and increasing that uh, sensitivity to 0.5 volts per centimeter. Why did I do that? Because and that means you're going to have to adjust the position. Okay, um, there's the position down there. Okay, it's, uh, I've located that's I've got it on ground, so there's nothing coming in. That's actually truly zero. And when I flip that back to DC, it's going to jump up and jump uh, pretty much the full distance of the screen, which means you can ac more accurately measure it. That is, the screen has a, I would say, a one millimeter resolution. You can decide, you can tell pretty much to the nearest millimeter what the, what the position is, what the jump is here. And so uh, if you have a little bitty signal and, it's, and you want to tell the difference between that and a little bit bigger signal, uh, and it, your resolution is only one millimeter, uh, then you have a pretty big error. But if you have a big jump and the resolution is one millimeter, uh, the air is smaller. For instance, uh, if this jumps from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 0.4, uh, okay, it's on the 0.5 volts per centimeter scale times 6.4, that's 3.20 volts. Uh, so these two together are producing 3.20 volts. And if, it, if you can read it to the nearest millimeter, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six centimeters, six centimeters, six point four centimeters is sixty four millimeters, and if you can read the resolution of the screen to a millimeter, that's one over sixty four. That's the resolution of one over sixty four, which is about one and a half percent. So you can accurately measure. Uh, I'm doing your error analysis. You can accurately measure something that jumps pretty much the full screen to a little over one percent accuracy, if you're very careful and you have a sharp uh, signal here. So your results should be uh, pretty close to 1% accurate uh, if, the, if the oscilloscope is running perfectly and you've calibrated it again. So you'd have to multiply, in this particular case, that 6.4 by 0.98 because I'm on channel 1, and that's the correction factor. So it might come out more like 6.3 volts is the true voltage uh, for these two cells together. So check two, one, two, three, four, uh, check them all, fill up the screen as much as possible with your jump, and you get something that's uh, between one and two percent accurate in terms of voltage if you made your correction for the channel that you're using. So that's the next part, measuring DC voltages. You measure a jump, uh, a steady value, a steady jump in vertical space on the screen. Okay, so now we know how to measure DC voltages on an oscilloscope. The next thing we're going to do is measure some AC voltages. And so I've, uh, I'm just going to, I've got this AC generator plugged into channel 2. So let's just switch over to channel 2 and switch our, our uh, freezing mechanism here, our, our trigger, to channel 2. And that will trigger it, and I can make I can switch the uh, sweep so that I see 
basically two cycles, almost two cycles of a sine wave. So uh, how big is that? Well, let's measure that. Again, we can put, we can, uh, set, I'm in channel two, so we lower that down to the bottom and, and count up. So it's one, two, three, four, uh, almost exactly four centimeters. Okay, four centimeters. What's that mean? Well, it's voltage. So uh, I have to look at the scale here. This is two volts per centimeter, four centimeters. That's eight volts, 8.0 volts, peak to peak. If, if it's calibrated, you have to multiply by the calibration fudge factor and get the final value. So that's an eight volt peak to peak sine wave. And I can adjust the amplitude uh, to make it larger and smaller. Uh, and again, uh, this would be, oops, channel two. Uh, this would be a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six and a half times point times two. That would be uh, 13 volt peak to peak sine wave. Okay, so uh, that's how you measure uh, anything, whether it's DC or AC. On this, uh, this is a 13 volt peak to peak sine wave. We measured DC. We measured AC. Okay, before we go on to the last part, and this is the only time you're going to be dealing with uh, measuring time, uh, we're going to check out and see one thing, that is, is the time uh, axis calibrated? How close to calibration is that? Okay, this is your trainer that you uh, will be using also next week when we do the diodes experiment. And uh, there, are, there are some wiring, there's some wiring on here, which please leave the wiring on, on this. Uh, the, the weak link in this trainer is the connections uh, that you, when you put wires in to these uh, little tabs here, uh, it's, they're not very sturdy. So uh, I've, I've made these connections and we may, I've made them permanent. Okay, so you know how this part works. These are interconnected. These are not, these are interconnected, these are not, and these are not connected to these. We, we know that from previous experiments. Uh, but we didn't use these upper and lower rows here. And again, black means ground and red means voltage. And so this black wire here is connected to this black wire here. It's blue instead of black, but uh, this whole row has got one big clip underneath it and all these are interconnected all the way across. And so they're all ground, black or blue, and then black relative to blue. So the upper row here and the upper row here are ground. And the lower row here and the lower row here are uh, five volts. So the, five, the red wires connect to five volts. These are always five volts. If you want five volts, there they are. If you want ground, there it is. You've got 50 places to plug your ground wires in, 50 places to plug your five volt wires in. In any case, uh, what we are looking at today is these outputs here, which obviously says AC volts. So it says this is 15 volts AC. And again, that's peak to peak. We know about that. And uh, the center tap here, the center wire is, this is a symbol for ground. And so I want to put my black wire into that kind of wiggle it and get it all the way down in there to make a good contact with that metal clip. And I'm going to put this red wire in and wiggle it around and get it down there all the way to, so this is zero volts, this is 15 volts AC when I turn it on. So let's turn it on. So let me take channel one. I've got channel two busy over here. And so let's take channel one and we'll connect this, the red wire here. Uh, by the way, the, the thing you definitely don't want to do is have these two wires touch each other. So make sure they're pretty far apart when you connect them and they stay pretty far apart when they're connected. Okay, so that's on. It says 15 volts. Uh, let's take a look at what it looks like. Okay, that's channel one. So I got to switch over to channel one and here's channel one. And uh, I'm not sure I see anything on the screen here. Let me turn the intensity up a little bit uh, and see what I can see. Oh, there's something way off in the corner here. What's going on? Oh, now I've got a big vertical line here. What that means is I have a big voltage and I need to make it look smaller, which is what the purpose of this knob is. 
that is, if I turn that down, that means that that increases the number of volts per centimeter vertically, and there it is. Okay, so, and I've got it turned to five volts per centimeter, and this is calibrated, and I'm going to move this up and down. Let me switch that so that I can see a sine wave. This is not a very nice looking sine wave. The transformer in that uh, trainer does a real number on the sine wave. So that used to be a nice looking sine wave. This is not a nice looking sine wave. The uh, transformer distorts this and uh, uh, it's also off scale. So what does that mean? Uh, okay, this is on the five volts per centimeter. This is eight centimeters tall. And so five times eight is 40. That means the voltage is more than 40 volts. But it says over here on the faceplate, it's 15 volts. So this needs a little explaining. So first of all, we have to see what this, what the voltage really is. So the sneaky way to do that is to put this on ground and maybe lower this down and put it on, uh, maybe put it on the bottom, we can do that. Okay. And then uh, flip it back up. Okay, we, well, we have to use AC here. Uh, so let's put it on ground, flip it back up. And we see uh, the ground is there. And so the, the signal is one, two, three, four, mm, 4. 4.7 centimeters tall. 4.7 centimeters, but that's only the top half of that pattern. So 4.7 times 5 is uh, 23 and a half volts, right? So the, the upper half is 23 and a half volts. Well, okay, uh, let's take a look at the lower half. So I'm going to put this up here at the top, on the top line, and look at the lower half. And I see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 0.7. Not a surprise. It's symmetric. Uh, so this is 23 volts also, 4.7 times uh, five is roughly 23 volts. And so 23 plus 23 is 46 volts. So it's 46 volts peak to peak. And I can't get it on the screen uh, because this only measures at the maximum 40 volts, eight times five. So 46 volts, and this says 15. Well, we'll talk about this a little later when we get to AC circuits, but uh, this, uh, this is called the RMS, root mean square voltage. This is, of course, what all we can do on the oscilloscope is measure peak values, peak to peak values. And so the peak to peak value is 46 volts, we'll say, and the RMS value is 15 volts. Uh, those two things actually go together because theoretically, you'll see later on, that the peak to peak voltage is two times the square root of two, which is 2.83 roughly, almost three times the RMS voltage. RMS stands for root mean square. And again, this takes a little explaining later on. So this is RMS voltage. This is only thing it can measure is peak to peak voltage. And so actually, if you do the calculations, you'll see that this is actually more like 17 instead of 15 volts to peak to peak. 46 divided by two times the square root of two is gonna come out about 17. And so this is putting out 17 volts RMS, 46 volts peak to peak instead of 15 volts RMS. Okay, well, that's what it's doing. We've calibrated this oscilloscope, so we know we're right within, what did we say, 1% or so on the screen. What I want to check now before we go to the last part of the lab is uh, how accurate is the time scale? And we won't have an adjustment for that, there, except that this is supposedly turned to calibrate. It's supposedly calibrated, but it isn't very well calibrated, as we'll see. So time scale. So what am I looking at here? I'm looking at the, uh, the very distorted sine wave coming from uh, the, the power supply modified by this, what's called a step-down transformer, which is stepping it down from 117 volts, that's RMS, by the way, the voltage coming out of those plugs, peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage is about 340 volts. So if 117 volts makes you nervous, 340 volts should make you really nervous. That's the peak-to-peak -peak value of the voltage accessed at an electrical receptacle. Okay, in any case, we're not looking at voltage. I want to look at time. I want to see uh, how, long, how long it takes to go through one cycle. Now, how long should it take? Well, it should take 
a sixtieth of a second because if you read uh, anything that you plug into the wall, it says 60 hertz. 60 hertz is 60 cycles per second, 60 sine waves per second. And that's uh, what's being produced at the power plant. The power plant produces this very, very carefully regulates this. They have a governor on their generators and it's very carefully regulated to 60 hertz. Now, one, if you have an electric clock that's, uh, that's not a digital clock that runs uh, smoothly, that clock is synchronized in terms of time by the frequency of the voltage coming from the power company. Now, if the frequency from the power company voltage is off by 1%, then your day is going to be 1% longer or shorter, according to that clock. And 1% of a day is quite a few minutes. So that's bad news. And that, that's not the case. The, the, the governor is really, really accurate. And so we can actually count on it that the input at the receptacles uh, is exactly 60 hertz. Uh, give or take a very small fraction of 1%, very small fraction of 1%. So uh, I know that whatever this looks like, it's 60 cycles per second at 60 hertz. And so one cycle is a 60th of a second. So I can measure, this is a time scale, I can measure a 60th of a second. And so let me just move this over. Um, and so, for instance, the repeat distance, the repeat distance is where this signal starts out here at the center x-axis and where it crosses over here. So one thing you can do maybe is to set this, oops, set this over, put this exactly on intersection here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, point, to, I'm just looking at it roughly 8.2 centimeters. Uh, and what scale am I on? I'm on the 0.2 milliseconds per centimeter scale. So 0.2 times 8.2 is 16.4. Those are milliseconds, 0 0.002 milliseconds per division times 8.4 is 0 0.0164. If you don't believe me, write that down and take a look at it. So it's 0.0164 seconds. And if you invert that, that's seconds per cycle, cycles per second, that's hertz. If you invert that, you get one over uh, 0.0164, which is not quite exactly 60 hertz. So this is off, calibration is off by, what should it be? It should be one over 60 is 0.0166667, whatever. Uh, and so it's a little bit off, and you want to figure out what the difference there is, how much is it off by, and that's how much your time axis is not calibrated by. And we don't really have a way to uh, adjust that, just like we didn't have a way to adjust the calibration on the vertical scale. So we, we can come up with another time fudge factor saying, well, if I really want the time exactly or close to exactly, then I have to multiply by, uh, um, multiply my reading, my time reading here by 0 0.0167 divided by 0 0.0164. And then I get my calibration, which is a, another um, not quite 2% difference. So it's not too far off. Okay, so we're going to leave that on the screen and we're going to do something very interesting. Uh, and I, I'll talk about that theoretically. We can slip that in to this uh, explanation in just a, just a minute when I go back to the board. but. Uh, uh, so this is a very horrible looking sine wave. I got a very nice looking sine wave over here in the other channel. And what I'm going to do is take, the don't forget, this is just one little electron beam, one little dot at, at any given instant in time, painting out this picture repeatedly over and over again, synchronized by your, uh, your trigger. Uh, so what I'm going to do is switch this dial all the way over fully clocked fully clockwise, and I see uh, something going on on the screen. You need to turn the intensity up here because the something that's going on on the screen uh, needs to be looked at. Okay, so it's still, it's just a horrible mess. Just a minute. Let me, let me move this down and move it over so that it's kind of centered. And, and I can uh, adjust this. I can't adjust the voltage here, but I can adjust the voltage here. So I can adjust this voltage to make it look bigger or smaller. And let me just fill up the screen with 
the pattern, the horrible looking pattern. Now, uh, I don't have a way to freeze this, uh, but uh, on, on, the, uh, on the oscilloscope here, but I have a way to freeze it over here, for instance. Uh, and I'll show you this theoretically in a minute. Um, if the dot goes up and down every 60th of a second and back and forth every 60th of a second, uh, and each one is a sine function, uh, I'll, and I'll draw that on board, then uh, actually we're talking about the in function of time, we're talking about uh, y and x being identical. So if x equals y, what do you get? If you plot that, we get a straight line. Okay. So uh, it's a little more complicated than that. So let me adjust this frequency over here until I get to uh, somewhere around 60. Okay, well, first of all, I've got to get on the right scale. So this is times one. Okay. So what have I done here? You may have seen in science fiction movies these sorts of things on the screen, and they don't mean anything like there's, there's uh, giant ants in the neighborhood, uh, but they mean simply that the the one, don't forget this is one little dot of an electron. It's doing this, painting this picture out, and it's almost, almost frozen. We'll just say it's frozen. It's close enough to be frozen. So this little electron is doing, uh, well, what's going on in y direction, what's going on in x direction. They're equal because they're equal in frequency. This frequency and that frequency are 60 hertz. When this goes through one cycle, the electricity coming out of the wall has gone through one cycle also. So it's almost frozen and, and it's, it's not a straight line, but if you wait just a second, it will look for just an instant like a straight line with a slope of minus one. Here it comes right now. Okay. And now I'm, I'm, my frequency is a little bit off, but not very much. So uh, let's take a look at what that means on the board, just a minute. I'm trying to set this dial relative to that dot, and I see I'm really close. I'm a little bit under 60, I don't know, we can call it 59.5, or you can call it 60. It's really close. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what the next Lissajous pattern is going to look like. This is a Lissajous pattern. Uh, let's see, if, if the dot, if the one uh, electron beam uh, goes around, a little dot goes around once in one direction and goes through two cycles in the other direction. For instance, let's set this at 30. What do you expect to get? Well, you expect to get uh, a figure eight, it's, or roughly, or, uh, okay, it's, uh, it's a butterfly. It's, yes, it can be a figure eight, okay there. Whatever it is, if it's a steady signal, which is almost that, that should be 30. And by golly, it's almost exactly 30 according to my dot here. Um, and so the calibration here is essentially perfect. That is 30 on the dial is 30 hertz. We can do it for 20. We can do it for 120. Uh, let's do it for 120. Let's see, times 10 and we can go to 12 times 10 is 120. Okay, now you see the, the sign, the, the figure eight is in the opposite direction. It's going through two cycles one way, the other way, and one cycle the third way, so, the other way. So, it's, uh, let me try to stop that the best I can. Okay, there it is. So, it reads, uh, I would say that's 119. So, 119 is, uh, little, is not quite 120, and so my calibration here is off by minus 1. It should be at 120, but it's at 119. So the difference between what it should be according to my multiple of 60 and what it is, which is 119, is 1 hertz. Okay, so if I want 120, I set it at 119, and I get 120. Again, I'm counting on the 
uh, power company to be exactly at 60 hertz. So, uh, so my calibration at 120 is going to be minus one. That is, uh, I, I set this at 119 to get 120. And I can do that for uh, 180 also. That's three times 60. So I should get a pattern that is frozen with three cycles one way and one cycle the other way. And again, it's very touchy, so we can only roughly calibrate it. So this is, uh, looks a little bit less than 180, maybe it's 179. And so again here the calibration would be minus one. The difference between the frequencies versus the true frequency is, is that this is 179 and it should be 180, so the correction is minus one. So uh, what we want to do then is to calibrate the frequency here in this, in this frequency generator, audio generator, calibrate the scale. It's pretty close. It's almost on for 60, it's almost on for 30, it's off by one at 20, it's off by one at uh, 180 hertz, uh, and so forth. So we can do that all the way up to maybe uh, about 400. 400 is, is 420 is seven times 60, okay. And so instead of reading, four, well, it's, it's probably a little bit less than 420. So maybe it's 416 or 17. It's very hard to parse that out to uh, the nearest hertz. But it's, it's clearly below 420 a little bit. So again, maybe you'd say it's maybe minus 2 or minus 3 uh, off. So that's a list view pattern. It's kind of fun. It looks like three. It looks almost three dimensional, but it isn't. That's one little electron dot going, doing all that on the screen, <laughs> in one uh, of your thirty thirtieth of a second visions. The oscilloscope is kind of painting the whole picture out for you to see the whole picture uh, all at once. But it's just one electron going up and down and back and forth. Uh, uh, on the screen. So, okay, well, let's, let's talk about this theory and then and we're uh, done with this lab. So your job is to, we'll, we'll talk about it, come up with a calibration curve for this instrument, which is pretty accurate as it turns out.